everyone, this is Jen from Scrappy Posh, and we are going to start on our um, Diagonally Book Nook. So, this is a quick look of what it looks like, but I have a share video that I'll link below. Let's get started. I'm going to take one of my pieces of chipboard, and you don't need 12 by 12 chipboard. Uh, the biggest dimension is eight and a quarter. Actually, we're going to make this one taller because if you noticed here, I had to make a lid um, that I actually glued on. And it's, it, it's unsightly, at least I think it is. And it made it so I can't reach my turn-on switches. So let's make it, that was eight and a quarter. Let's go nine. So... Our measurements here, and if you've never seen me cut chipboard before, I highly recommend one of these cutters with the the um, razor type blade. And we're going to cut be nine. So let's cut the nine inch first. I'm going to cut three inches off because that's nine. And this cutter, the reason why I like it so much is you just flip it over and voila, that comes off. So we'll save that for something else. Okay, so this is nine inches and let's do the, the long side is eight and a quarter. Oh, I'm not going to do the math. I'm just going to cut it at eight and a quarter. <clears throat> eight quarter and this is our biggest piece so so nine by eight a quarter and it sits this way so The next piece is the opposite side. <clears throat> it's going to be nine by six and five eighths. Uh, nine by five and a quarter. It's just taking an eighth inch off of that one we just made. That's the front. It's going to be five and a quarter. And when you cut it, you should be cutting one side to the eight and a quarter and one side to the six and five eighths. So I just did a test, a mock-up, uh, a mock-up. This one should measure to eight and a quarter. This one should measure to six and five eighths. It's pretty close. And we're just going to cut from one mark to the other. And then we can just bend it like this so we can see it from the other side. I'm cheating. Okay, here we go. All right, so it looks like that. Now, this is important because the mirror is going to go here, and that's what gives it the illusion of going way back in. And then we can use that same piece of chipboard to do the exact same thing five and a quarter. If you don't want to measure again, you can just use that as a template. I will measure one more time so you guys can see it. We're going to go eight and a quarter on this side. Eight 
and six and five eighths over here. There we go. And that should match up perfectly. There we go. This is five and a quarter. This is eight and a quarter, and this is six and five eighths, okay? Which makes this back piece, I think, four and three eighths. No, five and three eighths, but we're not going to cut that because that's the mirror, and I don't know if we're going to do a cardboard back yet. So stay tuned, but that's all we're gonna cut for now. Take your dollar store foam board. Okay, so this is going to be the street. Oops. your street just want to get this close as possible um, on the sides because the sides of your box have to butt up against this chipboard and you don't want to layer foam between them as far as the sides go here, you're not going to see those because the buildings are going to be covering it. You do want to make sure that there's no gap here. I have like maybe a 32nd of an inch there. When I glue this together, I'm going to butt it up against that. And then we're going to take the same, that's uh, not big enough, I'm going to take the same template and cut another one. We have... This one's a little fat. Let's get let's trim him down. Okay. okay here we have our two street templates like that. Now, one of these is going to be a sidewalk template, so you've got to remember that your buildings stick out a half inch on both sides. So, I have this little pencil. It doesn't have to be a little pencil. It needs to be a pencil, and it doesn't. you don't want it to be too sharp, but you don't want it to be too dull. So, um, it's just kind of in the middle. So remember your buildings stick out a half inch on both sides, about right there. And a half inch over here. So uh, you got Ollivanders and Fortescues and a Leaky Cauldron and Flourish and Blots. So for the sidewalks, Let's start out kind of thin and go wider in the back, which gives an illusion that the street is narrowing. So, um, 
taking the one that I did for reference already. Let me, you guys can't see where I, this is where our buildings are gonna be. They just, they only stick out that far, you guys. Um, we have some steps over here, uh, steps over here, yeah, steps over here, and then some cauldrons. So, I mean, we want a sidewalk. So how about we do, there's steps about right here, I think. So I'm just going to sketch in a wobbly sidewalk there. And then we're going to follow that pattern on this side. And you can make the sidewalk however you want. You don't have to follow my lead. I do like them kind of to follow the same curves. And then at the end, you want it to kind of curve this way. Because that's going to be... The way the mirror makes it look like it's going so my sidewalk looks kind of like that Oops. okay kind of like that so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it I'm going to leave the building sides. You want to make sure your blade is sharp or it's going to tear the styrofoam or the foam board. Okay, so there's one side of the sidewalk. Looks like that. You don't need that piece. And here's the other side. Okay, so there's your sidewalk. Now let's put some stone on. The stone is kind of an imperfect art. I'll zoom you in so you can see what I'm doing. So I start, you won't be able to see up here because the, uh, the front blocks that. So you just start by making little stone shapes, however big or small you want your street. And there's no rhyme or reason to this. You can make square ones if you want square ones, if you want like decorative patterns. You can do that. I just try and mix it up a little bit to make it look like a random um, I think one of the important things is is to make sure that you go all the way around and that you don't just like bubble one to the other unless that's the pattern you're going for And you do this to all the area that's showing. And these indentations are going to give us a really good uh, impression and stonework. And I will show you how we're going to paint it to make it look even a little more authentic. Um, the only thing is, is that you don't want the cobblestone straight to look exactly like Ollivander's and Ollivander's is going to be done in pretty much the same technique. 
So what I decided to do is leave the cobblestone street a little more plain than Ollivander's when I paint it. So I'm going to keep doing this and then for the sidewalks what I like to do is on the street side is kind of make individual stones because these are the stones that are are lining the sidewalk so I imagine that they would find stones that would line up and then or even before you take and you soften this edge by just, just kind of squishing your pencil up against it so that it's not that 90 degree bent or a perfect 90 degree you see kind of like a this is like after I do it and this real sharp corner here's the difference this is the rounded corner by just putting my pencil up against it and flattening that out and then this is the sharp edge so you don't want it to be sharp you want it to be round on the street side and then you want I think I think individual bricks okay so that was my goal for the night is to get these uh, completed and painted my hands really sore doing this but I wanted it to dry so that tomorrow I can put the oh the what do you call it aging on it I guess so before we paint I wanted to point out we uh, soften this edge but the other thing we want to do is kind of whoops maybe not that much let each brick wrap around and all you do is just kind of press to give each brick its own little individual side Make that one is. because you're going to be able to see the sidewalk like butt up against the street and yeah, you want each one of these individuals so the rest of those are done and you see kind of how that makes a difference okay now this is one of the things I do and there's a guy who makes miniature for Dungeons and Dragons and this is his idea so I don't want you to think it's mine or at least that's where I got it and it's just black paint and Mod Podge Mod Podge and it seals it strengthens it and gives it a base coat of black okay I'm done with that and you don't really have to rinse out your brush unless you're trying to get a really specific finish but I'm gonna do some white paint and uh, this is the fresco finished little black dress and over here we're going to do a gray And I'm going to pull my driest piece over, which is nowhere near dry yet, but that's okay. And start brushing. It's going to pick up some of the black in Mod Podge, or black from the Mod Podge, which is fine. We gotta make sure that we leave some of that cobblestone detail. I'm 
but we also want to get in between everything and get rid of all the white at this point. Okay, let's finish up this floor so we can move on to some buildings and the, the what I'm going to do is use my homemade wash here and then let it dry completely and then dry brush it with a lighter color. This is, um, I used this airbrush medium which just is a thinner, I think, and some Tim Holtz distress paint, like the Dabber one. But you can use black acrylic ink and, and water, of course, and uh, this finish dry stuff, I guess. But if you just want to go to the cheap route, just use some really thinned down black acrylic paint. Uh, I've never used that, so I don't really know what the difference is. But the effect is really, really neat. And we're going to use this on uh, a couple of different things that we have going on. So. I just put mine in this bottle from I think the dollar store and I put a bunch on and then first I just let it kind of run and get all over the place. Okay. And then I'm going to coax it into Some of the cracks here and this is like thin enough that it's going to go into all those cracks and it's why we let it dry completely before we do this okay Tip, tip. And you can see how it just brings out the cobblestone look. I'm going to set this on its side so it can drain and go on to this side. Hey everybody! All right, we're at the last couple steps here of the street. And then we can start on the buildings. I don't recommend uh, gluing the street to your floor yet, just in case. Um, if you are doing the fairy lights, then you're going to probably not need any and you won't probably won't be able to put anything under the floor but I'm going to wire my own this time so just using fabri tac to glue down the two sidewalks. It's not just for fabric. Oh, I thought I painted this, but I didn't. I'm going to have to come back and paint that side. What did I paint? Huh. I just missed that one. 
So you definitely need to make sure that your butt up right up against the uh, edge here. If not, we'll trim that. Not a big deal. But when your mirror goes here, you want to it you want it to flow. Okay. Now we're going to take a dry brush and some white craft paint or um, maybe some distress paint or whatever you got. Just you want it to be a dry brush. So I'm going to take my little plans here and you just lightly go over the stone with that dry brush. Okay, so that's how we do the floor and I think we're going to stop this one here and get ready to do um, either our front or some of the buildings. So uh, at this point we should have our covers done and our completed floor or road or whatever. So head on over to Artistic Studio Creations and get your list of goodies. I have everything that uh, I think everything that I use below and I will link any other pertinent information too. Uh, if you order regular price items, Scrapping Posh 10 will give you 10% off your order. So I thank you very much. Comment, like, and subscribe. Let me know if you're making your Harry Potter book nook. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.